Hi guys, back with me again, Aji Kuniawan Yusuf And in this video, we're gonna talk about basic concept of finance It is time value of money What is time value of money? To explain to you, I will use this illustration Do you ever imagine what was the price of a kilogram of rice in 2010, which was 10 years ago? Based on Central Bureau of Statistics data, 1 kilogram of rice in 2010 was 6,702 rupiah. So, with 50,000 rupiah, you can purchase 50,000 rupiah divided by 6,702 rupiah, it equals to 7.46 kilogram. If I round it, it will become 7 kilogram. But in 2020, 1 kilogram of rice had become 12,343 rupiah. The price increased due to inflation. If you are wondering what is inflation, you can see my video about inflation. So with 50,000 rupiah, I can purchase 50,000 rupiah divided by 12,343 rupiah. It equals to 4.05 kilogram or I can round it into 4 kilogram. We can see here with 50,000 rupiah in 2010, I could purchase 7 kilogram of rice while in 2020, I could only purchase 4 kilogram of rice. Yes, the same rice. What can we conclude here? As the time goes, with the same nominal of money, we get lower value. In 2010, we get 7 kg, while in 2020, we only could get 4 kg. This is time value of money. Time value of money states, as the time goes, value of money is decreasing. One more time, time value of money states that as the time goes, value of money is decreasing. We can see here, in 2010, 1 kilogram of rice is 6,702, so we can purchase 7 kilogram of rice, while in 2020, the price of a kilogram of rice is 12,343, so we can only purchase 4 kilogram of rice. My question is that, could we predict the price of a kilogram of rice in the future, for example, in 2030? The answer is yes. We can use future value and present value formula. Future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. Future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. As we know that fv is future value and pv is present value, while i is interest per period, while n is the number of period. Let's go back to the previous example. In 2020, the price of a kilogram of rice is 12,343 rupiah. What will the price be in 2030? So 12,343 is the present value, while the price in 2030 will be the future value. Assume that the interest rate is 10% per annum, per annum means per year. And also the period we can see from 2030 into 2020 is 10 years. So N is 10 years. Just input to the formula, FV equals to PV times 1 plus I to the power of N. The PV is 12,343, the I is 10% or 0.1. Well, for the n is 10. We can find that the future value is 30,014.563. Is it easy, right? The concept of future value and also present value also used in calculating compound interest. 
Wah, what is compound interest? This is the illustration. I will explain that by comparing compound interest and also simple interest. Let's talk first about simple interest. For example, you have 1000 rupiah and then you get interest 10%. It means in the next period, you will get 1000 rupiah plus the interest. The interest is 10% times 1000 rupiah. It equals to 100. So 1000 plus 100 equals to 1100. In the second year, you will get additional interest, right? The interest is still calculated from the principal, which is 1000. It means the interest is 10% times 1000, it equals to 100. So your money after a second period will be 1100 plus additional interest. 100 it equals to 1200 it is simple interest because the interest is always calculated from the principal how about compound interest for example you have money 1000 and then you get 10 percent interest per period it means after one period you will get interest 10 percent times 1000 right it equals to 100 so after one period, you will get 1000 plus the interest 100, it equals to 1100. In the second period, you will get additional interest. But the interest is not calculated from your principal 1000. But it is calculated from your previous balance, which is 1100. So the additional interest will be 10% times 1100, it equals to 110. So your money after second period is 1100 plus 110, it equals to 1210. This we call as compound interest. So what is compound interest? Compound interest is interest on a loan or deposit calculated based on both the initial principal and the accumulated interest from the previous period. One more time, compound interest is interest on a loan or deposit calculated based on both the initial principal and the accumulated interest from previous period. Yes, we use the same formula, future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. Remember that the i is interest rate per period, not per year. And n is not number of years, but it is number of periods. If you are confused about period, let's talk it more detail. We can find i from interest rate per year divided by number of period in a year. Well, for the n, it equals to number of years times number of period in one year. For example, the interest is 12% per year for 10 years. If it is compounded annually, it means you get interest every one year. So, one year equals to one period. So, the i is 12% divided by 1 because 1 year, 1 period equals to 12%. Well, for the n is 10 years times 1. It equals to 10 period. How if it is compounded semi-annually? It means you will get interest every 6 months. In this case, you will receive interest two times because it is every six months or we can say that in one year there are two periods it means the i is 12 percent divided by two equals to six percent and n 10 times two because in one year we receive interest two times it equals to 20. how if it is compounded quarterly Quarterly mean every three months. It means in one year, there are four periods. How about the I? I equals to 12% divided by four. It equals to 3%. Well, for the N, it is 10 times four. 
it equals to 40 periods. How if it is compounded monthly? It means in one year, there are 12 periods. So the I is 12% divided by 12, it equals to 1%, while 40N is 10 times 12, it equals to 120 periods. This is a sample question. Owen invests his money in the amount of 2 million rupiah in a financial instrument that gives 12% return per year. The interest is compounded monthly. Calculate his money after 5 years. So we can see here that the present value is 2 million rupiah. The I is 12% divided by 12 because it is monthly, so one year. 12 period, it equals to 1%. Well, for the end, is 5 times 12, it equals to 60 period. What is as it is future value? Just use this formula. Future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. So it equals to 2 million rupiah times 1 plus 0 0.01 or 1% to the power of 60. So we can find that the future value is 3,633,393.397 rupiah. Another example. In the next 5 years, Michiko wants to have 5 million rupiah in her saving account. How much money should she deposit now if the interest rate is 10% per annum, compounded semi-annually? It means one year consists of two periods. 5 million rupiah is future value because it is money in the next 5 years. And then for the I is 10% divided by 2 because one year consists of two periods semi-annually. It equals to 5%. The N is 5 times 2. It equals to 10 periods. What is S is the present value. We use directly future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. The future value is 5 million rupiah, it equals to present value times 1 plus the i is 0 0.05 or 5% to the power of 10. So present value equals to 5 million rupiah divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power of 10. It equals to 3,069,556.237 rupiah. The next question is that how we can calculate the I also N. To make you easier, I give you directly simple formula of I also N based on the formula of future value equals to present value times 1 plus I to the power of N. Let's have exercise again. Sean invests 300,000 rupiah and in 3 years, Sean expects to have 500,000 rupiah in his saving account. How much annual interest rate must he earn? We can know that present value is 300,000 rupiah and the future value is 500,000 rupiah. N is 3 periods because it is 3 years and compounded annually. So what is S is I. I equals to the division of future value and present value to the power of 1 per N minus 1. So I equals to 500,000 divided by 300,000 to the power of 1 third minus 1. It equals to 18.5. 5-6%. Last part, how to calculate present value and future value of uneven cash flow. So this is the example. In year 1, the cash flow is $100. In year 2, $300. And year 3 is $500. Let's find the present value first. Assume the interest rate is 10%. So we have to calculate the present value in year 0, 1, by 1. From the formula of future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n, we can find present value equals to future value divided by 1 plus i to the power of n from year 1. 
the present value in year 0 is 100, the future value, divided by 1 plus 10% interest to the power of 1 because the difference from year 1 to year 0 is 1 year. It equals to $90.91. Now let's go to year 2. 300, it is the future value, divided by 1 plus 10% interest to the power of 2 because the difference between year 0 and also year 2 is 2 years. It equals to 247.93. And the last one in year 3, 500, divided by 1 plus 10% to the power of 3 because the difference between year 0 and year 3 is 3 years. It equals to 375.66 Then we sum all the present value from year 1, year 2, year 3 It equals to $714.5 So the total present value is $714.5 How about the future value? Let's calculate the future value in year 3 So we have to calculate the future value of each 100, 300, and 500 in year 3 Future value equals to present value times 1 plus i to the power of n. From year 1, the future value is $100 as the present value times 1 plus 10% to the power of 2 because the difference between year 1 and year 3 is 2 years. It equals to 121. How about year 2? The future value equals to 300, the present value times 1 plus 10% to the power of 1 because the difference between year 2 and also year 3 is 1 year. So it equals to 330. How about year 3? We directly put 500 in year 3. It comes from 500 times 1 plus 10% to the power of 0 because year 3 and year 3 the difference is 0. It equals to 500. So the total future value is 500 plus 330 plus 120, it equals to 951. Whoa, have you got the idea for time value of money? As the conclusion, time value of money states that value of money will decrease as the time goes. So if you have money right now, don't only hold your money but invest it so your money value will not be harmed by interest rate or inflation.